Hi guys, this is Mrs. Homer, and today we're going to cover restriction enzymes and genetic engineering. So restriction enzymes are used throughout um, biotechnology um, and all they do, they're enzymes that are used to cut DNA into smaller pieces. So there are lots of different restriction enzymes and they all have a specific sequence of DNA that they look for. Um, and when they find that specific uh, sequence of DNA, they break the bonds there, cutting the DNA. So when you're done using a, a restriction enzyme on DNA, you'll have a lot of fragments that have varying sizes. And that's one reason why restriction enzymes are used uh, when we use when we do gel electrophoresis, because it creates lots of small fragments that can be separated uh, during gel electrophoresis. So like I said, there are lots of different restriction enzymes and each of these enzymes have their own sequence that they identify and then use to cut the DNA. So for instance, Eco R1 is a restriction enzyme that looks for the sequence GAA TTC. And when it finds it, it cuts the DNA at that particular spot. But if you look later, Ball1, uh, this looks for TGG CCA and cuts the DNA at that spot. So again, each restriction enzyme has its own sequence that it's looking for. Now here's an example, HIND3. HIND is looking for AAGCTT. So we look along the top portion of the DNA for this segment. And we will find one right here. When we do that, we cut based on how the, the restriction enzyme cuts. And I'll always tell or show you how the restriction enzyme cuts. This one cuts down between the two A's on top, cuts over, and then cuts down between the two A's on bottom. So this restriction enzyme will make one cut, but will give us two fragments of DNA. This is another example. This is a lull. And this looks for the specific sequence of AGCT. When it finds a sequence, it'll make a cut between the G and the C, and it'll cut straight down. So if we look along the DNA across the top, we can find this sequence right here, and we'll cut straight down between the G and the C. Now again, you have to find this entire correct sequence, A, G, C, T. It can't just be a part of the sequence, it has to be the entire sequence. And this is a little bit different from the way that Hind 3 cuts because this cuts straight down instead of down, over, and down. So because there are two ways that restriction enzymes can cut, there are two ends that we can end up with. The first end is called a sticky end. So a sticky end is created when your restriction enzyme cuts down, over, and down. It creates overhanging DNA that can stick to other DNA. So this overhanging DNA right here that says AATT, if it finds a sequence that says TTAA, it will combine and bind and stick to that. And so that's why we call these sticky ends. So again, that's when it cuts down, over, and down. Blunt ends are created when we cut straight down. And so a blunt end uh, is, looks different at the end. It's not sticky. It won't cause the DNA to stick to other pieces of DNA. It will instead cut straight down. So if we look back up here, again, a, a sticky end goes down, over, down, whereas a blunt end cuts straight down and has uniform edges with no overhang. All right, last thing we need to know is when we're dealing with uh, cutting DNA, if we want to know the length of a segment, it's really easy. You just are going to find the longest side of the DNA fragment and count how many base pairs there are. So the longest side is here on top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten base pairs long. Over here, the longest side is on bottom. So again, we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is also 10 units long. Okay, so again, restriction enzymes, they're used to cut DNA. They either cut them uh, DNA with a sticky end or a blunt end.
The next part of this is we're going to talk about different applications in genetic engineering. So there are lots of different ways that we actually engineer uh, genes. And so the definition of genetic engineering is just the direct manipulation of genes for practical purposes. So basically, we're messing with genes because we want to uh, solve a problem or fix a problem or just because we want something in particular. And genetic engineering is heavily regulated by the government because we can do a lot, but we shouldn't do everything we can do. So the first part of genetic engineering is understanding what recombinant DNA is. Recombinant DNA is simply DNA that is made from two sources. So most often you'll see a gene from one organism inserted into the genes or the DNA of another. And so recombinant DNA, it's simply DNA made from combining two sources. Most often we're gonna make recombinant, recombinant DNA using what we call a plasmid. A plasmid is a unique piece of bacterial DNA, and it is just a small loop of DNA that carries a very few number of genes for the bacteria. And we can use these plasmids in a lot of biotechnologies. So what we do is we take the gene of interest, something like, say, the GLOW gene from a jellyfish, and we can insert it into this bacterial loop creating recombinant DNA. And then there's a lot of things we can do with this recombinant DNA and a lot of different ways we can manipulate and use it in genetic engineering. So again, here's the basic idea of how recombinant DNA is created. We find a gene of interest in some organism, whether that's a plant or a bacteria or an animal, and we cut it using restriction enzymes. And we cut it out of that DNA. So now we have all these genes of interest that we want to insert. So then we find that circular plasmid, which is that circular loop of DNA from a bacteria, and we cut it using that same restriction enzyme. The reason we cut it using the same restriction enzyme is so that the sticky ends that are on either side of my gene of interest and of my plasmid match so that I can put them together and they'll stick together. So in the end, I have recombinant DNA. It has my gene of interest from whatever organism I took it out of, maybe from the jellyfish. And then I have my bacterial DNA here and they are combined together, recombinant DNA. So what can we do with recombinant DNA? One of the things that is uh, very common with recombinant DNA is something called gene cloning. So basically, if that gene of interest is something that we really need to study, we might want to make a lot of copies of it. So we take the gene of interest, we put it into our uh, plasmid, making that recombinant DNA. But then we take that whole loop and we put it back into the bacteria that it came out of. Why? Well, now that bacteria has that gene of interest inside of it. And when the bacteria reproduce, you'll notice that it reproduces again and again and again, every time making copies of that gene that we inserted into it. So we can do one of two things once the bacteria has uh, replicated many times. We can remove now the gene of interest and study that gene in particular, or we can remove the proteins that are now being made by the bacteria as they're reading that gene of interest. And so a ex good example of this is the production of insulin. So we took the insulin gene and we cut it out of a human cell and put it into one of these plasmids to make this recombinant DNA. Then when we put this recombinant DNA back into the bacteria, the bacteria start reading that gene and producing insulin. And so now we can collect that insulin and extract it to use in the medical field. And so again, number one of the number one uses of recombinant DNA is to copy those genes and to maybe produce proteins that are needed for medical fields as well as for industry.
So that's the first use of recombinant DNA. Another example of genetic engineering and using recombinant DNA is called gene therapy. So gene therapy is a field that is just exploding right now. Uh, so there have been so many clinical trials. There have been so many companies that are springing up that are studying gene therapy because it is a whole new world of medicine um, that is potentially going to uh, help with so many different genetic disorders. And so what is gene therapy? Gene therapy is simply identifying some type of disorder caused by a defective gene and then going in and replacing those defective genes with healthy genes in order to correct that disorder or that disease. And so we can literally, we just identify the gene that creates the problem find a healthy version of that gene, and we insert it into a stem cell using recombinant DNA. Once we have these cells that have the healthy gene into the, in them, we place these cells in the patient where they're needed. And what we hope is that these stem cells will eventually develop into the cells, replacing the damaged or unhealthy cells with the bad gene, with healthy cells with the good gene and that that replication of those new cells will begin to fix the problem. There will be a video that you have a chance to watch today that will go a little bit more into gene therapy and show you some of the amazing things that are happening in the world of gene therapy. So again, gene therapy is simply finding the defective gene and finding some way to replace that gene in the cells in the patient so that the function is restored we can also turn off genes or change the genes that are in the person as well. So gene therapy is just a crazy, awesome, amazing uh, application of uh, genetic engineering. All right, the last use of, or the last application of genetic engineering and recombinant DNA uh, that we're gonna talk about are transgenic organisms. So you've probably heard of GMOs, which are genetically modified organisms. GMOs are organisms that have had their DNA modified in some way in a lab. So we have changed the genetics of that organism in some way. But a transgenic organism, it is a GMO, but it's a very specific type of GMO. A transgenic organism is one that contains DNA from two different sources. So their own DNA and then another organism's DNA has been inserted into them. So a really good example of this would be those glowfish that you've probably seen at the aquarium. I know that we've owned them before. These are transgenic fish because not only do they contain their own DNA, they contain the DNA of a jellyfish that allows the fish to grow. Now we've inserted that fish into all sorts of organisms or that gene into all sorts of organisms. So we can see these glow in the dark cats, I've seen it in pigs and in mice. And again, this is a transgenic organism because we take a gene from another organism and we insert it into um, an organism like a cat or a pig. We can do this with plants. So a lot of genetically modified uh, plants have had a gene from a bacteria inserted into their genome. And so transgenic organisms contain DNA from two different sources, their own DNA and the, G the DNA from somebody else. So here are some examples of both GMOs as well as transgenic organisms. So we have this um, salmon in which the, a gene to grow faster has been inserted into the salmon, which makes them larger and faster. So this would be a good application in terms of being able to keep up with maybe the food supplies and the growing food demand of our world. So fish that grow faster and larger can meet that growing need uh, for food. Uh, this is a goat who has been uh, transgenic, it's a transgenic goat uh, because we've inserted a gene for blood clotting into this goat. And so when the goat produces milk, it produces this protein as well that can be harvested for medical use. So again, we're inserting genes that don't belong into this goat for practical purposes. So this is an application of transgenic organisms.
And then of course we've got our glowfish and I like this example. This is a genetically bred bare skin chicken, uh, which is supposed to be more environmentally friendly. So these are some examples of animals and how we're modifying these animals, uh, both in transgenic ways by inserting DNA from other organisms into them, and also in just plain gen uh, genetically modifying them by going in there and tweaking their own DNA. Some examples of plants and reasons why we could use uh, transgenic organisms in plants. Um, so one major issue for farmers are pests and the, the need to use herbicide without killing their own good plants. And so you can genetically modify a plant and insert genes that will keep pests from eating them or will keep the plant from dying when herbicide is sprayed. So by inserting these genes into our corn plants or tomato plants, we can protect them from pests, from droughts, from bacteria, and even from herbicides that we're spraying ourselves. We can also insert genes into food that makes them healthier. So golden rice was one of the first applications of uh, transgenic organisms in which it was modified to increase its nutritional value. Nowadays, there are tomatoes that have had genes removed. So this isn't necessarily transgenic, but it is a genetically modified organism because we've removed the gene that prevents it from softening and rot rotting so that it is it will be able to stay in a grocery store longer without going rotten. And lastly, this is an Arctic ap apple. Again, this is not transgenic because it doesn't have DNA from another source. But this Arctic ap apple, we have actually changed the genes. We turn them off so the apple will not turn brown uh, when it is cut. And so it allows us to keep this apple fresher longer. So again, Really important to understand that transgenic organisms specifically have DNA from another source. A GMO includes transgenic organisms, but it can have its DNA modified in any way. We might turn on a gene or turn off a gene or remove a gene or modify a gene. But if we insert a, a gene from another organism, it is a transgenic GMO. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about is bioethics. So this is a huge and new field of study uh, because of where biotechnology is going. Bioethics is simply debates whether or not we should do certain things in biology. Because guys, we can do so much, but the question is, is it ethical? Is it something that we should be doing? Is it something that will really benefit us in the long run? And so there's a lot of debate as to what technologies we should be using and what technologies we should stay away from. Human cloning would be a great application of something that we should maybe stay away from. Uh, so uh, that's all that I have for today with in terms of restriction enzymes cutting the DNA with restriction enzymes and genetic engineering, directly manipulating our DNA. How, have a good rest of your day.